Welcome to this research presentation by University of Derby, which was formed in 1851 as a teacher training institute. We are extremely proud of this heritage of ours and extremely proud about our teaching and learning focus. Academic Innovation Hub within the university, which I am part of and head uh, the department, is primarily looking at how we can look at educational technologies and pedagogies that would drive the education in future. We do the horizon scanning as part of the university work. MOOCs is an integral part of our approach. We are looking at MOOCs as a way of delivering a flexible education uh, in the future uh, and to take lessons from that approach to apply in our university-wide teaching and learning strategy. In the summer of 2015, the Academic Innovation Hub at the University of Derby delivered two MOOCs. The first was on digital literacy, managing your digital identity, and the second was on a number of topics relating to dementia. Because MOOCs were originally based on a higher education model, they often viewed completion as a measure of success, and any learners that didn't make it through from start to finish were somehow considered to have failed. Now there's a growing consensus that completions alone aren't a good way of analysing MOOCs, and instead we need a more granular approach to measuring success. The starting point of our research is that MOOCs are very different from traditional higher education qualification. Typical higher education qualifications have entry requirements, they have academic requirements uh, for people enrolling onto those courses. While on the other hand, MOOCs are open to everybody. Uh, in fact, anybody who is a 13 year old and has an access to email address can go on to a MOOC. So the question that it poses from an instructional design point of view is how do you actually design a course which is applicable to this diversity of learners uh, who have different motivations, different interests, uh, and how they different, uh, perceive MOOCs differently as well. So we will look not only at how to design a course which would be applicable to this diverse range of learner, but also to reward their learning as well. So a lot of people go on to MOOCs and who learn uh, individual elements within a MOOC and not necessarily complete the whole MOOC. So how do we design a course which would recognize that micro learning, those micro achievements by our learners? In this research uh, further, we will outline how we have actually designed our MOOCs and also the lesson learned from the learner behavior uh, in line with uh, the pedagogical approach we have taken with this design. Each MOOC had a fixed start date, ran for eight weeks in total, and consisted of six units of content. One of the decisions we made early on to support a diverse range of learners was to make all of the content available from the beginning. Support moved through the course in a weekly schedule, but learners were free to adapt and adopt their own strategies for completing the course. The second design feature that we introduced was to provide a badge, a digital badge, for the completion of each unit. This meant that no matter what combination of units a learner decided to take, they'd be able to get some recognition for the learning. To make sure that these badges were meaningful, we also provided a set of learning outcomes for each one and verified them through a HE validation process. Both courses experience a significant percentage of learners that enroll but never actually access the course. This is fairly standard in MOOCs as a lot of people register but never enroll onto the course. And it is one of our proposals that enrollment on its own are not just seen as the only measure uh, to consider the MOOC success. Instead, we should be more interested in what we term as active learners. These are people that have accessed material in the course at least once after it has started. For the digital literacy MOOC, around 16% of active learners on the MOOCs went on to complete the whole course, which meant they had completed all six units within the course. For the dementia MOOC, around 36% of the active learners completed the whole course. In both the cases, there were also a final summative assessment that could be submitted uh, by the learner. However, as we have stated, we don't believe that completion of the course should be the only measure for measuring the success of the MOOC and the learning that has taken place within it. On the digital literacy MOOCs, around 32% of our active learners get at least one badge, which means they complete at least one unit. On the dementia MOOC, around 58% of learners gained at least one badge. This measurement represents a substantially higher amount of learning being recognized within the course. The pattern through which learners completed the units can also give us interesting insights into their behavior. Firstly, if we look at the percentage of active learners that completed each unit, then we can see it drops off from one to the next. Again, this is fairly standard in MOOCs, but we're happy this wasn't quite the exponential drop off that's sometimes reported. And comparing against active learners rather than enrollment helps avoid the distortion of that initial loss of large numbers. In this next visualization, each learner is represented by a single line that shows on what date they completed each unit. There's quite a scatter of lines, but also a strong diagonal feature, which represents a large portion of the learners following the weekly pace of the course. This is also seen in the discussion post data, where although 60% of discussions in total took place outside of the supported unit, 
If you look at each week individually, then twice as many discussions took place in the supporters unit than in any one of the others. Horizontal lines indicate that two units were completed at the same time. It's interesting that on both MOOCs, around 10% of learners completed the entire course in one day, which would give a horizontal line straight across. If we want to get an idea of the order in which units were completed, then a state diagram can give us a much clearer picture. Here each circle represents a unit, with size denoting the number of completions. A line entering from above indicates the number of learners that started with that unit, and the line below is the number of learners for which that was their last unit completed. Curved lines above represent learners moving to a unit on the right, and curved lines underneath show them moving to the left. Here we can see visualizations for the Dimension MOOC on top and the Digital Literacy MOOC below, each drawn to their own scales. Again, we can see a core body of learners moving linearly through the course, but we can also see evidence of learners taking different approaches. A high percentage of learners who, who complete at least one badge compared to those who are completing the whole course proves that micro-learning does take place in MOOC, and this is the type of learning that is not reflected in all the overall completion rate. This suggests that when we are measuring learning success or completion in MOOC, we should analyze this micro-learning and it should be taken into account. However, designing modular MOOCs should not be just about providing recognition for individual segments of the course. Instead, these modules should also have clear learning outcomes and assessment criteria to maintain academic integrity associated with these learning achievements. The aim of the modular design was to provide learners with as much freedom as possible in how they approach the course. But the wide variety of abilities, goals and behaviours make drawing any conclusions almost impossible. There was no correlation between the data sets, such as the amount of time logged on the course, how many days that was spread over, the number of posts that they made in discussions, and the quality of those contributions. Learners joined at different times, completed different units, and the majority of activity took place outside of the supported unit. However, if the aim is to support as wide an audience as possible, then a certain amount of this chaos needs to be embraced.